Did you know the LA strips you swear by to confirm ovulation do not actually do that? That is right. It is the job of progesterone and it's a post ovulation release. In fact, as per this study, LH can easily confuse you. 44% of women can have more than one LA surge in the same cycle. If this happens, it means that they did not ovulate during the first surge. Plus, in some cases, despite multiple LA surges, one just doesn't ovulate at all. This is called unovulation. And about 6 to 15% of women struggle with unovulatory cycles. But before we dive into that, I am Dora, functional medicine health coach, your go to pregnancy expert. And I'm here to help you find the most reliable way to confirm ovulation. LH or ovulation strips can help detect your LH levels and LH levels only. When you use them, your strips will only say, yeah, your LH has surged. But you might think, gee, I'm ovulating. And you'll be ready to set the date with your partner. Here's the thing. While LH release might trigger ovulation, it doesn't really confirm it. Progesterone does that. In fact, it is the release and surge of progesterone right after ovulation that says your egg was actually released. Want to know how this complex yet beautiful process comes about? Keep watching. So your menstrual cycle can be divided into two phases, a pre-ovulatory phase, aka the follicular phase, and a post-ovulatory phase, the luteal phase. Your follicular phase begins on the first day of your period. That is right, while you rest and munch on all the things comfort, your ovaries are hard at work. Both of your ovaries have numerous follicles, tiny sacs each containing one egg. During this phase, your pituitary gland releases follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH. Like a teacher in the classroom, FSH begins growing and developing some of the follicles present in your ovaries, preparing them for their one true purpose. But only one of them becomes the teacher's favorite, aka a dominant follicle. Once matured, the dominant follicle releases a lot of estrogen, which DMs your brain to send LH. Your brain too takes its job seriously. At 24 to 36 hours before ovulation, it begins flushing you with LH. Then at about 8 to 20 hours before ovulation, this LH peaks to rupture the follicle and release the egg. Voila, ovulation, clearly. LH releases before ovulation. So LH strips can't be trusted to confirm it, which is why progesterone release after the real ovulation proof. If you track progesterone at a clinic or monitor its metabolite PDG at home, you can easily confirm ovulation. Want to know how? With this fertility monitor called Inido. Inito tracks the real-time value of your progesterone metabolite PDG, and then it confirms ovulation so you can make the most out of it. Important as it is, ovulation is only the first step towards pregnancy. The second won't be possible without progesterone. Basically, progesterone loves to get and keep you pregnant. Here's how it does that. Remember I told you how the dominant follicle ruptures to release your egg? The remaining of this follicle forms a mass of cells called corpus luteum. Think of this yellowish corpus luteum as a mini progesterone factory. Its purpose? To flush your body with progesterone. It is this progesterone that confirms ovulation and prepares you for an early pregnancy. On the other hand, your egg hangs around for sperm to come. And in case of a no-show, it waits to be flushed out. In case your egg doesn't get fertilized, your progesterone levels will fall, causing your period. But if your egg does meet a healthy sperm and gets fertilized, progesterone will help set camp for implantation. For this implantation to be successful, progesterone should be above 10 nanograms per milliliter in your blood. 
here on progesterone keeps increasing to function as an inner mother for your little one. And at that, it does a lot. Firstly, it stimulates the thickening of your uterine lining, making an ideal home for your fetus. Then it regulates your immune system so it doesn't accidentally attack the baby seat thinking it's an intruder. Progesterone even ensures that your uterine lining remains rich in blood vessels. This gets your little one a constant supply of nutrients for its growth and development. Clearly, progesterone is an important character for the story of pregnancy. Not only does it confirm ovulation, but it also helps your baby stick and grow. Naturally, with something as important as progesterone, extreme levels can be distressing. And I personally want it all to go well for you. There is no fixed normal number or level for progesterone. It can be different for different women and it can vary across their menstrual cycle. Although in terms of progesterone, the normal means you should have lower progesterone before ovulation and higher after that. Here is why. Remember how during your follicular phase, FSH stimulates the growth of your egg? Well, for FSH to make sure you have healthy follicles, progesterone needs to remain low. And low means 0.1 to 0.7 nanograms per milliliter in your blood. In urine, progesterone gets metabolized as PDG. So the usual PDG range during this phase should be 0 to 3 micrograms per milliliter. That's because high progesterone prevents FSH release. And low FSH means lower chances of ovulation. So high progesterone levels during the follicular phase is a big no, especially if you were trying to conceive. Your progesterone levels better remain low during this time, but only during this time. It needs to be high during the luteal phase, high as in 2 to 25 nanograms per milliliter in the blood. Here, the normal range for progesterone metabolite PDG in urine is 6 to 30 micrograms per milliliter. This is non-negotiable, as these levels will make sure that your baby seed gets the right care and nourishment. Low progesterone during the luteal phase can actually lead to implantation failure or miscarriages. A common culprit is luteal phase defect. And the root of luteal phase defect is, again, low progesterone. Luteal phase defect means luteal phases that are consecutively shorter than 11 days. These leave your baby seed with lesser time to attach. Or even if it does attach, the short supply of progesterone, which your body is already rationing, prevents a stronger bond. This is what might cause unsuccessful implantation or early miscarriage. This means that even after ovulating and conceiving, one might not be able to maintain their pregnancy. And that is all no thanks to low progesterone. This is why tracking progesterone can help you know when it is low. With that information, you and your doctor will be able to monitor and prevent recurrent miscarriages and find solutions to them. The conventional option is to go for a traditional lab test that measures the amount of progesterone in your blood. But for this, you need a doctor's prescription, some time out of your schedule, and a lot of money since these tests need to be done multiple times in a cycle. Why? Because just like the mood swings it causes, progesterone is really moody, meaning it fluctuates often. So naturally, it can be overwhelming to track it accurately. Wonder what can help? Inido. You can use Inido to track progesterone metabolite PDG and confirm ovulation from the comfort of your home. Not just that, Inido also measures the values of estrogen, LH, and FSH to give you a full fertility picture. In doing that, it measures all your hormones on a single strip. It saves you time, money, and makes tracking hormones hassle-free. Plus, there is an added advantage. Since all bodies are different, there is not one third fits all. This is where Inido comes as at a knight in a shining package to track and confirm ovulation. Unlike other OPKs, Inido confirms ovulation based on your unique 
EDG values and not a common threshold. A common threshold would mean that all women ovulate when their PDG is at a level X. But that's not true. All bodies are different, and the way they show the up and down of progesterone is different too. To understand this better, let's compare the hormone charts of two Enedol users. As you can see, user A PDG is at 11.4 micrograms per milliliter. User B is at 26.1 micrograms per milliliter. Which one do you think is normal enough to confirm ovulation? Actually, both of them are. Enido tracks your hormones according to you and only you. It won't say, oh, PDG is 5 micrograms per milliliter means you've ovulated since all women ovulate at this common threshold. No. Instead, it would keep a note of your PDG each time you ovulate. And whether you reach that same PDG level, it will use the previous data to confirm ovulation. Now you know the importance of progesterone metabolite PDG in confirming ovulation and the best possible use for Enida. But progesterone is not just the hero of conception. It also plays a vital role in preventing miscarriage. You already know that progesterone is vital at strengthening your early pregnancy. Want to know how you can be there for it? We'll be happy to fill you in on all the lifestyle changes that can help you increase your progesterone levels. And with that, your chances of getting pregnant. Ask us in the comments below and we'll make a video on it. Until then, keep maintaining a healthy lifestyle and a good diet. Good news might just be right around the corner. Lots of baby dust to you.